Okay, this one is going to be the other damsel. You've, you've seen the smaller one that I did. Well, this is another hatch or another action I saw by some damsels in one of the lakes I like to fish. If I told you which one, I'd have to shoot you after I told you. This is tied up using some uh, TMC 200R size 8 3X long hooks. Uh, the eye mount is about three inches of eight pound mono. I use a little bit darker color on this one so you can see it easier. The eyes are just little black micro beads and you want them pulled in real snug to the body. The uh, thread, I prefer the 140 but I'm out of that in this color so I'm using 210 denier. The ribbing is some ultra lace clear. I'm going to add some dubbing to the abdomen size just to build it up just a little bit. And the wing material is uh, actually a couple of strips I've already cut from a, uh, a Ziploc freezer bag. And I'll show you how to apply that to get a little wing pattern and back case pattern. And the tail, uh, just some medium olive marabou is all I'm going to use on that just to give it a little bit of a tail section, kind of like a lung. So we'll start off on this one like before. I'm going to wrap back about 10 wraps. Wrap forward again, four, maybe five, so it kind of leaves tells you where you're going to put your eye. <clears throat> and then we take this mono and I don't do the meltdown nub to drop the beads against. I'm going to take this, do a couple quick wraps around it, pull it up on top of the hook. And I'm going to pull it so it crosses and I'm going to do a figure eight tie around this to keep it where I want it. Okay. Now the reason I prefer this, and here's a little trick on the beads too, if you set the beads down on the surface and push your finger down on them, you'll come up with a bead stuck to your finger like that. Now I can take that, the hole is obvious, I can just stick the leader into that hole, stand it up and drop the bead on. Now when you do this, don't melt it down, take it and spin this the side away from you a couple times, you want to turn it clockwise, and do a loose wrap on here. I usually do two of them, so I can pull that and adjust the size of it. And I'll reach down and get the second bead, and I'll stand it up here. Drop the bead on the line. I'm going to turn this one counterclockwise away from me, so it throws a loop up over the eyes. And I'm going to go through here with a quick little figure eight. Now I can adjust these pieces of mono. I can pull them into whatever width I want those eyes. And unlike the uh, cut or the uh, meltdown, I've had a lot of the meltdown little bulbs break loose when you get into rocky waters. And I got tired of losing all my beads. Doing this, and I've done this for years, I tried the, the meltdown for just a short time, gave up on that, went back to this because I can adjust those loops when I'm tying to whatever head width I want to make and it allows those eyes to bounce around a little bit uh, like this. So it adds a little bit more action to your fly when it's moving around. It can look more like an actual moving eye. Now I, I took several different colors, a uh, near white, a real, real light green, and a, a little bit of medium uh, Antron, and just keep pulling on it and mixing it together. I'm going to do that for the abdomen. Now these guys had a nearly clear translucent body with a little bit of coloring in it. I want to bulk it up a little bit so it's a little closer to the same fat that they had, same body diameter they had. And I'm just going to spin this on here real quick like. You notice I haven't cut that mono off. I don't cut that off till I get clear back to the bend in the hook. That way it doesn't pull off real easy. Now this is going to give me my internal color on this fly. I'm going to build it up just a little bit more. I can do a second wrap over that so I've bulked it up just a little bit. Now I'm just going to do a wrap over on that. I'm going to get back here to where that thread comes out. Wait a minute. <laughs> Doing too many things at once. I pre-cut this vinyl tubing just for this purpose so I don't have to work with the whole package of it. And I'm just going to do kind of a wide wrap back on this to bind it down. You get back here to where I'm going to add the tail in. Now I can take this mono, pull this mono up, cut off the excess mono that I don't need and then grab me a piece of uh, marabou in here and I'm going to reverse this when I tie it on. I want the stiffer end of this marabou. So I'm going to take this 
squeeze this down and don't worry about the shape on it too much because you're going to cut it to what you want. Lay that down. Then I'm going to double it over. I want a good healthy lung wing sticking out the back of this guy. Now I can wrap forward again. And I usually, when I get up to where I'm going to do the thorax, I'm going to throw a quick keeper hitch in there so I don't have to worry about the thread coming loose if uh, something gets a hold of it. Now this, I'm going to grab a little pair of hackle pliers because I want to keep this laying fairly flat. I'm going to take this and just wrap it nice and even. You want a completely even wrap on this because their body is really, really an even laid body system on their abdomen. And this adds a little bit of an iridescent. It doesn't look like it right now, but you get it in the water and it shows a little bit of an iridescent translucency to it that they have in their body. I get this up. If you have a little bit left over, don't worry. There's other flies you can use it on later. I'm going to reach down here and tie this guy off with some figure eight style loopings. Cut off the excess here. Now I'm going to go to work on the abdomen, but I'm going to cheat. I want this wing start that they show. I want this laid out in a particular manner. So I'm going to take this before I even start the thorax. I'm going to take this and I'm going to lay this piece of Ziploc down on here. Get it bound down. Now I'm going to start the thorax and all I need for the thorax is a little bit of off-color Antron. I'm going to go with some tan and some real light green for this one. Or medium green rather. You can see what I mixed up here. This is for the thorax. I'm going to do a couple of steps here that people look at and go, you can't do it that way. Well, that's okay. Don't tell the fish, because I really hate to embarrass the ones that like it and take it. I want this a little bit different color, though, than the thora or than the abdomen, because the thorax is a different color on these than the abdomen is. I'm going to wrap back a couple times, and I'm going to figure eight it around the eyes. I'm going to pull the eyes back a little bit. You want it good and snug on those, and you want a very definite thorax. Now... I can take this, I can pull this, leave a little bit of a stub sticking out, hold it down, a couple real solid wraps around that. Now that gives me my wing start that they have, and I'm going to go underneath the head, come up, start my forward, I'm going to pull my back casing over the head. Secure that. Stand that up and nip it off just about at the back of the head. I want something that's going to move around a little bit in the water. Standard head finish. Now I cheat with the denier. I know I said it on the other, but I'll say it again. I'll keep saying it. I cheat with the denier. I'm going to do a five loose wrap on the head. Then I'm going to do some more loose wrap on it, another four or five wraps again. Ah. And then, once I've got those done, I'm going to wrap the denier around my finger and I'm going to pull on this until it snaps the thread. That does, because of that, you get a binding, it buries it down in itself, much like the clinch knot does. Now for the tail section, for that little breather lung, you can see I'm pinching this down pretty small. I don't want much of it sticking out there, I just want that offset discoloration. And that gives you exactly what you need. There's a good look at the fly, nice easy view. I'm going to rotate that up for you so you can see what it looks like from the back. See what it looks like from the stomach. Now the nice part about this is, I don't worry about the legs, and I haven't found the fish worrying about the legs too much either. But if you want to add some in, I would use the vinyl ribbing and cross that while I was doing the uh, 
the initial lay down because that ribbing doesn't come loose at all well. I mean, it, does, it doesn't break like the rubber does. And the other thing you can do is tie a little thumb knot in it, thumb knot being the simple over and through and pull it. And when you do your wrap for your legs, lay them as a figure X and then figure eight around that. And that gives you a good set of legs. But there is what it looked like when it was coming up. These were some that had shucked already in the water and were climbing up on my pontoon. So there is your other damselfly nymph. Uh, give it a try. Let me know how you do. And hope this helps you out. Catch you later. Bye.